In this example, I'm going to show you how we can use Solid Edge with synchronous technology to quickly and easily create a part and then export that part for analysis. To start with, we're simply going to create our base shape. We simply key in the values that we'd like to use for this particular part. And then once we have the profile, we can determine what the width of that profile is. And in just a few steps, you can see that we've created the base shape of this particular part. We'd like to add a couple of electrode cutouts for this part. And in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're simply going to create our base sketch. Notice as I use my sketching tools, I can use Quick Pick to actually lock into the plane that I'd like to use to make sure that I'm always drawing exactly where I'd like to be drawing. And then using some of the view manipulation tools, I can make, make it easier by going into a profile mode. The Solid Edge drawing tools allow me to very easily create the shape that I'm looking for. And notice the design intent, so as I pull away from the circle on an arc, I get a tangent relationship. Notice I can also find key points, midpoints, and I can also line up the part as I see fit. Also, if I have some extra geometry that I need to get rid of, I simply drag a line across and I can trim that away. I can also add intelligence to the model. So for instance here, I'd like to make sure that the arc endpoints are always lined up. And then I can add dimensioning to make the shape of the part exactly what I'd like to see. So I use smart dimension. I can very quickly key in the dimensions that I'm looking for. And also as I do this, notice that smart dimension allows me to make many different types of dimensions with a single command. So for instance, for this last dimension, I'd like to go from the edge to the tangent point and I can do that as well. So you see very quickly I've created the sketch that I'm looking for and now what I want to do is create the cutout. Simply select the revolve command. I tell it that I'd like to remove material using quick pick. I grab the sketch that I want to find an axis of revolution and an extent in this instance 360 degrees because we want a full cutout and now the cutout has been created in that part. Now that we've created the cutout, what I'd like to do is create a similar cutout in the top face of the part. So rather than going back into the profile mode and recreating the sketch and recreating the feature, I'd like to simply reuse the feature that I've created. So in order to do this, I come over to the Pathfinder, I select the cutout, select the Move Copy option, and then notice when I select the synchronous steering wheel and drag the part up, it creates a similar cutout in that face. Now, of course, in this particular instance, I don't want that cut out in the side face. I want it in the top face. So let's say how we can use synchronous technology to make those moves. First thing I'll do is select the steering wheel, and I'll tell it that I'd like to rotate it up 90 degrees, and you can see that now the cutout is in the top of the part. Now, the only thing I'm not sure of is that I have the dimensions exactly right. So I'm going to reorient the steering wheel. I'm going to place it at the center of that part. And now when I tell it to move, I can lock it into the key point so that when I slide it across or when I slide it up, I make sure that I get the exact center of the part. And now you can see that I've created that second cutout. So in only a few minutes, we've created the part, we've created the cutout, and we've used synchronous technology to copy, move, and rotate that feature to have the second cutout. Now that the part is complete, I simply tell it I want to save it as, and I can call it a solid edge part, or in this particular instance, I'm going to tell it that it's a step file. We're going to call this two electrodes. And now the part has been exported via a step file in order to be used for analysis. This concludes the Solid Edge portion of the demonstration. This is the case of two electrodes placed in the tank and our task is to calculate the electric field distribution between these two electrodes. We know that the electric permittivity of the air is 1 and that the voltage difference applied to these electrodes is 1 kV. I will start quick field. Again, let's check the problem properties. 
this is the electrostatics problem and the model class is three-dimensional import. Let's open the geometry model and take a look at it. There is no background region here. This body is the imported using the card import importing from the card. And this is the air block. But inside this air block there are two electrodes. We do not need to simulate the metal electrodes. There is no effectively no electric field inside the conducting inside the conductors. So we simulate only the air block and specify the electric potential distribution on the electrode's surface. This is the negative electrode and this is the positive electrode. Now let's build the mesh. and take a look inside and see how the mesh looks inside. Now a long Y. Yes. I will hide the cutting plate. So this is the finite element mesh distributed in the A space. In fact, the mesh size is small, it's only 3000 nodes of elements. And I'm using the student quick field, which is available for free download from our website. So all these examples you see today, you can simulate with the free Quickfield Student Edition version. Now let's take a look at the simulation result. Again, without cutting plane, I cannot see the field distribution inside. I will switch on the vectors and hide the plate. So here is the electric potential distribution with the vector plot of the electric field strength. And of course I can switch on the color map of the electric field strength and I can measure the electric field strength at every point. This is the point coordinates and this is the electric field strength at this point. I'm using the probing mode tool. Now let's move to the last example. 